And I would tell you that the first thing is it is a partnership. We have the opportunity to be able to generate about two and a half billion dollars in today's dollars over 40 years toward transit. And this is an initiative that was initiated by the city council and put that on the ballot in concert with MARTA. But it is a city of Atlanta sales tax for 40 years. Tremendous opportunity to be able to improve uh, the transit service within the city of Atlanta. This represents the largest investment in transit in the last 40 years. And there's a lot of great investments in transit that we've had in terms of the heavy <coughs> system that's in operation today and, and the extensive bus service that we have, but we know we can do better. That's why this program was created. So we look at the next slide, Melanie. The one thing that, a couple of highlights with this. We did, it was mentioned that in November of 2016, we had the half cent sales tax, the more Marta tax that was passed, we implemented over 40 years. It will expand and improve, thank you, appreciate it. It will expand and improve the existing bus service that's there. And in addition, we're going to talk about how we're going to enhance the, the existing stations. That exi we talked about the two stations on either end of Fort Mac. Those are stations that are going to be improved uh, as we move forward. So I want to give you a little bit of background uh, as we move forward. And we had invited, oh, Tim is here. Great. Hi, Tim. We had had a spot on the agenda for the city's uh, commissioner of city planning to be able to address. And I'm glad we were able to make it. Uh, at this point in time, I thought I might be able to allow Tim to gather his thoughts. And I know you'd like to introduce him. So why don't I give you just a minute? Perfect time. He just, he just, he's been, he's, Come on in, Tim. So this is the Commissioner of Planning for the City of Atlanta. One of our great, I, I love Commissioner King. He's been with us for two or three years, I think, coming in. Three years, exactly. And has really come up with some great creative ways in terms of how we grow and redevelop Atlanta. So I'm honored to have him out here tonight. He's been on this project here at Fort McPherson. He's actively involved with what's happening in terms of expansion of MARTA, in terms of how it applies to our communities and all of that. So let's give Commissioner King. Thank you for having me, Councilmember Overstreet as well. Um, the, uh, I just wanted to provide a little bit of context for the discussion around transit and this investment that we're making tonight. Uh, the, the, the region is projected to grow quite a bit over the next 20 or 25 years. The, the regional commission, which is the group that plans for the region, says that we'll add about two and a half million people to the region, they're saying over a 25 year period. So that's a lot of growth. That's, a, that's the equivalent of adding Charlotte and its region to ours over that period of time. We're, we're thinking that it would be really good if the city grew substantially over that period of time as well. That's not been the case in the past. Usually Atlanta's population has been very static as the region has grown tremendously. You know that, you see it. But what that means is, you can turn that off. Somebody can turn that off if you want. Um, what that means is that we as a region have built a place that really doesn't work for transit. And so we think that it would be in everybody's best interest, and especially residents of Atlanta, if over this next period of growth, the city grew quite a bit more. And to, absorb, to deal with that kind of growth, transit is fundamentally important. It's critical, obviously, that more and more people of Atlanta can choose to not drive. You know, I mean, we, we need better transit now, you know, just for those of us that are here, but imagine adding that many more people to the city if they all come here and they all drive as much as we do, we're in big trouble, you know. So, so that growth has to be really supported by smart decisions about transit. And so as we're going through this process with MARTA, that's the lens we're looking at for you. We did this Atlanta City Design at the Cascade Studio recently, which is really the blueprint for the city. And, and that's the image you see here. And, and the gold colors are the growth areas in the city. And, and the shades of green are conservation areas, which is mostly neighborhoods, but I won't get deep into that. But, but I, I do want to say that we, we are listening at these meetings and we're very attentive to how important it is that we make the best kinds of decisions we can make right now as a community as to how we invest this 
this, this money. And developing the recommended plan in front of you tonight is in fact the growth corridors that Tim identified. We want to make sure that we are in fact providing those areas where we will have more growth, more density, higher ridership potential with the ridership investments uh, of transit in that area. So those are very important elements for us. A little background about how we got to where we are now. Uh, there was a lot of buildup prior to the vote in November 16, a lot of listening conversations. We gathered a lot of the plans that uh, ARC, the Regional Commission, has put together along with the City of Atlanta and MARTA and others. We looked at those projects. We created what's called a long list of projects. Depending on how you, you count it, it was either 40 or 70 projects. That approved project list and the guiding principles for this program were established prior to the vote in November. And that vote was very successful, of course, as we all know, in November. In 2017, the city of, of Atlanta and MARTA started working together very closely to be able to evaluate those 70 projects. Because what happened was we identified those 70 projects had a price tag of about $11.5 billion. We only had $2.5 billion to spend from the tax. So we had some decisions that needed to be made. What we did was we evaluated those projects. We developed a proposed pro pro program in early 18. We presented this to the MARTA board and to the city council in May of this year. And since June, we've been having meetings like this. We actually have three meetings tonight to be able to go out. We have one in Buckhead. We have another neighborhood planning unit meeting that's going on and this meeting. So we've been all over, all over town making sure that we get good input from you about the program that's been proposed. I wanted to briefly put up the guiding principles for the program. There's a lot of words that can kind of jump out at you here. You see balance, increased mobility, enhancing commute, first and last mile connections. These are the guiding principles that the, that the City Council and MARTA agreed to prior to the vote in November. These nine guiding principles were intended to guide the selection and the narrowing of the projects. So I wanted to, we have a board in the back uh, that uh, you can take a look at this with a little bit more detail as we go on, but this was an important effort that, that I want to recognize in developing the program because we've looked at each, all of these projects through each of these nine lenses to find out what was the most optimal program to service all of the city of Atlanta. Uh, rather than just one or two portions. So as I mentioned, we looked at those, that long list of projects. We took a look at, basically we had 14 measures. What was the ridership that's been generated? What's the cost of this? How much connectivity? A lot of factors that we looked at, access to jobs. And also we did kind of what we called system planning. The one thing that we understood was for this to be a successful program that had great benefit, we couldn't have one project way over here disconnected from another project over here. There needed to be a system thought process. How do these projects connect from here to here to here? And so that actually had a big impact upon how we, I'll call it the, the art of planning as opposed to the science of planning, we had to kind of figure out what combination of projects made the most sense. I also want to re restate, we've had public input since before the vote. That informed the, the identity of the, of the 70 projects, the long list of projects. As soon as the vote was uh, approved, we actually had a number of listening sessions where we came back out and said, we've got to make some decisions. What's your input? That input has actually been used by us in putting together this plan. Now we're out for a third time saying, okay, are we getting it right? Are there adjustments that need to be made? Uh, if we use Campbellton as the example, is the Campbellton solution right? Or do we need to think of something else? So that's the kind of input we want to get from you today as we move toward making a decision later this fall. So there's three modes of transportation that we are proposing and I've just mentioned them very briefly here. Light rail transit, bus rapid transit, and what we call arterial rapid transit. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail of this, but the ideas uh, are actually going to be expressed back here. I know we've got Chris and others that are back in the modes. 
uh, station back here. We have people that are going to be manned at each of the stations. We have four stations we'll talk about. They'll, they'll be able to answer any and all of your questions. The light rail transit is a rail vehicle, much like the Atlanta streetcar. That's actually a light rail vehicle. It operates in the street, so that's why they call it streetcar. But a light rail vehicle can operate in a dedicated lane, uh, basically exclusive of, of traffic, be able to get faster travel time. A bus rapid transit can do the same thing in a dedicated lane, just with bus technology at a lower cost. And then arterial rapid transit would be higher, faster service, uh, but in mixed flow, meaning it's, it's uh, in traffic with, uh, with uh, automobiles. So those three modes are what is in the plan. I'll encourage you, if you have questions uh, at the end of this presentation, to be able to talk to the folks back in the modes, uh, mode station. So a couple of key benefits that we look at this program. As I mentioned, we looked at serving the entire city of Atlanta area. We're, this program actually provides service and connect 126 neighborhoods in, in the city of Atlanta. An important factor is we would increase access by way of transit to more than 350,000 additional jobs. We'll also increase uh, have provide greater access to transit for communities with minority or low income population by a factor of 61 percent. So this is kind of some of the metrics that we have to make sure that this program is receiving, is providing the, the benefits to the community moving forward. Importantly too, you see some of the important critical service areas that we this product plan will connect to. The number of medical facilities at 77, 115 schools, that's elementary all the way up through university level, and 83 grocery stores. So we're trying to reach not just a smaller part, but a larger part of the city of Atlanta. We have already started spending money on more market. One of the key things that we heard in our listening rounds was, I need a better, more frequent bus. I need to, I can't wait an hour for a bus. And so one of the things that MARTA has actually been doing is looking at increasing service. We have provided almost $15 million on an annual basis of new bus service and the operating costs that are required with that. We're also seeing an increase in our week, weekend ridership of 5%. So there's a return on that investment that we're seeing. A couple of quick notes, and we'll have this information for you. We have 10 routes with improved frequency. And so the idea here is we're promoting more service out on the streets at a faster clip than you've had before. Nine of those routes, plus in seven corridors, have peak headways now of 15 minutes or less. They're not having to wait 30, 60 minutes for a bus. So as I said, we're getting more ridership because of that. I want to emphasize two other interesting things that I think is important. We have 80 new jobs as a result of this. We have 80 new operator jobs that are being put into place because of this increased service. And we are also providing 365 additional daily revenue hours. That's 365 hours a day of more service that we're putting out on the street in more market. That's the basic bus service. I know a lot of you want to talk about some of the other projects. But this was an important message that we felt we needed to respond to the public uh, when, we, when we heard from them during the, the, the time leading up to the vote. But let's talk about what's really we want to talk about uh, tonight. And I take you back to the postcard that has the map on it. I go through what I call is a five-click process. We have five layers of investments that we're talking about. The first one is what we're talking about, light rail transit. And so you can see that we have identified five quarters that have the potential to be light rail transit. And they're labeled here on the left. This includes two segments of the Beltline, the Northeast and the Southwest. We're creating what we call an S concept, the idea of linking all of these projects together to create a continuous system. This would go connect with the existing streetcar in the downtown area, and then we'd come all the way out uh, to Hamilton Court, all the way out to uh, Greenbrier. The second layer that goes on top of that is in blue here, 
And this is the bus rapid transit corridor uh, layer. Again, we've proposed a, a BRT layer in the Campbellton corridor. So this is a second investment. The idea behind this is to implement bus rapid transit early, faster than it would take to implement a light rail transit corridor. And then as ridership builds, we can transition over the 40 years to a light rail operation. We've had a lot of questions about that, and I would encourage you to ask questions about that when we break into this, the uh, breakout sessions. We also have three others, Capitol Avenue, BRT, North Ave, and North Side Drive. So that creates the layer of bus rapid transit service. The third layer is the arterial rapid transit. So these are the ones that wouldn't necessarily have a dedicated guideway and faster travel time, but nonetheless would have fewer stops and, and therefore a little faster service. So we've identified three along Peachtree Road, Cleveland Avenue, and Metropolitan Parkway. This is the important one. The fourth layer is the uh, enhanced bus layer. And so this is what we've talked about. We've already started to implement some of these projects. The idea is to put more frequent local bus service to be able to have a broader reach to our entire community. We can't afford to put rail in every corridor to the farthest reaches of the city, but we can provide faster and more frequent service to many parts of the community. So that's what this layer of service would do. The last layer is also an important one. And I know if we talk about the Oakland Station, I know if we've heard a lot of comments about the escalators and the elevators. We have a current program that's ongoing right now to repair those. But we also want to put a little bit of an up, update on many of these facilities. And so we've identified all of the heavy rail stations plus two additional transit centers, one out southwest in Greenbrier and also up northwest at Morris Mill. The idea here is to provide good transfer opportunities so you can move quickly from one route to another if, ne if necessary. So as we move forward, I've given you like a lightning round view of what this program is intended to be. In order for us to address all of your comments, we've structured tonight's meeting to allow you to meet with four different stations. We have a public comment station over here where once you have had a chance to have conversations with folks, getting information uh, to your questions, you can provide public comment if you wish to do that. We have a number of tablets and people to help facilitate you. The program overview to give you a better idea, you'll see Aaron over there, he's able to talk to you about what I just run through about the projects, the guiding principles, and how did we come up with the program that we presented tonight. And then Chris and David and others are over there in the modes area. If we talk about ART and BRT and LRT, it's just a lot of letters, right? Well, they can actually give you a little bit better information about each one of those modes. And then importantly, we have a station over here that if you have questions, just general questions, and especially service-related questions, what's wrong with my bus, why is it coming, those kinds of questions we can address over here too. But we're all available until 8 o'clock tonight, and okay. uh, I want to make sure, I'm not done yet, but I want to make sure you knew kind of how we we're approaching this. Uh, we do have a number of, of uh, ways to, to be able to allow you to communicate with us. We want to be able to hear from you. And we have a survey that we want you to take. If you would please take the time to provide your input to us. We'll talk about the number of surveys we've received so far in just a minute. But, um, so what we have done so far in the months of June and July, you can see numbered here in the, in the numbers. We've had 19 community events similar to this. We've had 1,400 surveys come in. We've had 14 stakeholder meetings. We've had seven of the neighborhood planning units, and we have more yet to come. Um, and so this is kind of a represent, representation of what we have done today. More importantly, what are we doing in the next month? It's going to be a busy month. Melanie's going to be tired. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie is our primary outreach person, so if you haven't said hi to her tonight, come say hi. She's going to be helping, leading a team of folks that we're going to be meeting with 18 additional stakeholders already scheduled for the month of August. We're going to have five additional community events, four community forums. Tonight is the first of four. 
We have one every week for the next three weeks after this. And then we also have, we have six additional neighborhood planning units. So we're trying to work as hard as we can to be able to get out to the community and get your input uh, in this important program. Now, as the council member said, we are shooting for an approval of this program in this fall. And right now, the, the target is to get to the, to the board at, at MARTA in September. There's a lot of work that we're doing in addition to the outreach. We have coordination with the city council members, as well as with the mayor, and with the MARTA board members during that time, leading up to a September event. Once that approval is received, then we start working on each of these projects. We have to prioritize those projects. How much money do we have to invest now? We have to do the planning, we have to do the design, and then ultimately construction, and then we'll be doing a funding plan. But throughout all of that is community education and outreach efforts throughout the planning and design and construction process like tonight. So if you haven't heard from us on Facebook or Twitter, it's out there. We obviously have a MARTA uh, email address as well. So those are opportunities for you to communicate with us. So this kind of reaches the end of, of, of our presentation. And we're going to turn it back to the council members.